Good day once again, my name is Graphics. Now we'll look at, at another example on friction. But in this time, we're talking about friction on an inclined plane, on um, horizontal plane. It says, a man wishing to slide the stone block of weight 1000 newton over an horizontal floor. A man. Let's assume this is our stone block here. Right? On the horizontal inclined plane. And the weight of it is 1000. And the man is wishing to slide the stone block over what? An horizontal floor. He now ties the rope. As he ties the rope, he pulls the rope. He now ties the rope to the block and pulls it in a direction of the inclined plane upward at an angle of 20 degree. He pulled it upward at an angle of what? 20 degree. So we are now told to calculate the minimum pull necessary to slide the block if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.6. So what you have to do, you need to draw this illustration. And this is how it goes. Now this is what we are having. This is the illustration of what I just did here. This is it here. So it's pulling it. One thing is, as you are pulling the block, frictional force will tell you, you go nowhere. Right? So there will be a force that will be acting opposite to the pool. And that will be our what? FS or FK. Now, if you look at this, in every block that is sitting on a rotor floor, there's always a normal force that acts perpendicular to the surface. So we we'll call that force that perpendicular, we we'll call it what? Fn is called the reaction force. It's always opposite the action force. It's equal and opposite the action force. Now we've done this. Now if you recall, if you look at this very well, this force here is what is inclined. And whenever I say an inclined force, you have to what? You have to resolute that force. You resolve the force into vertical and horizontal components. So I'm going to add this. So this will be going upward here and I'll call it P sine 20 and this will be coming this direction like this and I'm going to call this P cos 20. Better still in most cases you can just draw your vertical and um, horizontal line so this is what you'll be having so let's proceed so we have resolved it into vertical and horizontal components so we are moving forward so from here you are going to write the parameters it's very important the data given data or the parameters we say the weight is giving us 1000 newton and uh, the question of friction mu is 0 0.6 the angle let me call it alpha or let me call it theta is given to be 20 degree now we are targeting to look for the force so let's see how it goes. So from here, you're going to say summation of f of x is equal to what zero, and you consider forward force to be positive and backward force to be what negative. So if you look at horizontal, if summation of f of x means any force that is parallel to this horizontal plane that is f of x so this is parallel so f of x minus f of x then um, the next one plus p cos 20 because it's going forward equals to what zero 
right now we we'll move forward since this is summation of f of equals to zero i sent it as saying p is equals to this summation of f of x is zero shows that p also is equals to this now if i take this to this other side my p will be equals to f of x i mean fx minus p cos 20 so that will be having now from here recall fx which is a friction, the static friction is equals to what mu fn now we we'll move forward We write it this way that my p which is my force will be equals to mu fn minus p cos what cos 20 minus p cos 20 now from here we've gotten we don't know p we don't know fn so we'll tag this to be equation one so from this place we'll go to the next one which is summation of fy equals to what zero and i'm going to consider the upward force to be what positive and the downward force to be what negative so the summation of f of y will be we have fn which is our reaction force or the normal force is going up so it's positive minus 1000 the 1000 is the weight acting downward then look at this going up to and that will be plus p sine 20 is equals to what zero now if i take everything to this side my normal force will be equals to 1000 minus p sine 20 from that point i've got in my fn i'll call this equation 2 so the next thing i'll do is i'll put fn in equation one above hmm? so putting it there this is equation one so i'll be having p is equals to mu mu is 0 0.6 right so i have 0 0.6 or better still just write your mu first of all i will have the fn so i'm writing my fn i'm going to put this equation here into brackets 1000 minus p sine 20 minus p cos 20 so i've written this but the difference between this and this i what i have imputed my fn equals to this in this equation here so from here the first p will now be the mu is given as 0 0.6 0 0.6 into bracket 1000 minus p sine 20 minus p cos 20 now p will be equals to 0 0.6 times 1000 will give me 600 minus 0 0.6 times sine 20 to give me 0 0.205 0 0.205 but because of the p i'll put p close to it then minus cos 20 p cos 20 will give me 0 0.94 p 0 0.94 p so from here 
my P will be equals to 600 minus 0 0.94 plus 0 0.205 that will give me 1.145 I have 1.145 P because they are, they are the same just like you are having 0 0.205 mango plus minus 0 0.94 mangoes since they are like them you are going to put them together now from here I will take this to this point here so it will be P I'm collecting like terms if this guy is coming here it will be um, minus three plus 1.145 P equals to what 600 so I'll move this to this side so they are the same so to give me 2 Point one four five p because this p has its quotient of one so one p plus one point one four five p will give you two point one four five p equals to what six hundred so you divide both sides by two point one four five p by two point one four five to make p stay alone so p now will now be equals to six hundred divided by what 2.145 so the P here will now be 279.72 279.72 Newton so that will be P so thanks for watching we'll meet in our next video don't forget to click on the subscribe button and like the video